A little youth, me run the place My grandfather had a serious look upon him face I threw me young, ever in a haze Non-stop up and down the wall Hello everyone, Jay Mullings from Rent Mirror here AKA Wicked Penman Please like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends All that good stuff, you already know what it is But anyway, this week's topic is It's reggae month, it's February so I wanted to talk about Reggae Month that and I haven't really spent much time on the Wicked Penman channel in a while so I wanted to examine Reggae Month and then kind of look into the history of things like the Grammys and who's won and don't worry I've got, I've, I've got a whole plan just bear with just bear with so first of all you'll be wondering what Reggae Month is I'm on the website for Reggae Month Jamaica.com it says Reggae Month was officially proclaimed and first staged in 2008, spearheaded by the Ministry of Culture and powered by the Jamaican Reggae Industry Association, Jaria. That's a nice name, you know. You don't have to write that one down. I'm playing. The focus of Reggae Month is edutainment. So I guess edu education and entertainment. Squash them together. Anyway, highlighting Jamaica's musical history and heritage. The annual celebration has been a huge success, attracting on average 40... No, you're not getting none of that this year, so let's not even look at that. The goal of Reggae Month is to attract international acclaim for Jamaica as the reggae mecca of the world, enhance travel and tourism, uh, that's not happening, for the month of February, and provide educational an educational platform of entertainment for all ages. Okay, I dig it. I get it. But yeah, it started in 2008. So it's in its infancy, which also begs the question, right? When it comes to Jamaica, you always kind of go scratch your head sometimes. Jamaica is very advanced as a, as a nation and it has some very advanced people. You know, we're responsible for a lot of innovation and, you know, like influencing culture. No doubt. How the hell do you get to 2008 before you realize that there should be a celebration of reggae for... I know, I know what most people are going to say is that, you know, um, the appreciation for reggae is, is, is all year round. No, but you've got to have a reggae month. Are you... <laughs> anyway, let me not even know if I'm bother. <laughs> right. I wanted to also look at the... I was looking at the billboard charts, but for reggae and all of that, I thought that was interesting in itself. But no, let's start with every... Grammy winner for best reggae albums from 1994. Right? Might might run out of, might run out of breath by the time I'm done with this one, but let's let's start. Bad Boys by Inner Circle. They won in 1994. 95 was Crucial by Bonnie Whaler. 96 was Shaggy with Bombastic. 97 Fallen is Babylon by Ziggy Marley. 99 was Friends by Sly and Robbie. 2000, Calling Rastafari by Burning Spear. Hold on, does that make Burn? No, nope. oh, I'm going to say that's the first time Burning Spear won. Oh my. 2001, Art and Life, Beanie Man. 2002, Halfway Tree, Damian Marley, Junior Gong. 2003 was Jamaican E.T. by Lee Scratch Perry. <laughs> Jamaican E.T. I like that. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> when you hear him speak you get i guess it makes sense uh 2004 was dotty rock sean paul 2005 true love toots and the maytals 2006 was welcome to jam rock so that makes damien marley junior gong a two-time winner what within the span of wow he had a hell of a run there in it and then 2007 was Love Is My Religion by Ziggy Marley. 2008, Mind Control by Stephen Marley. So it was a Marley hat trick. Three consecutive years, these guys won. Blimey. 2009 was Jai Is Real by Burning Spear. So there you go. Burning Spear is a two-time winner. Stephen Marley again in 2010 with Mind Control. Well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, it's the acoustic version. Still, come on. That's a bit cheeky. <laughs> 2011, 
Hey, man said strip out everything else, just give them the guitars and resubmit the work, you know? Wow. <laughs> 2011 was Bujabantan Before the Dawn. Stephen Marley again. 2012, Revelation, part one, The Root of Life. Yo, Stephen have the formula. <laughs> 2013, Jimmy Cliff, Rebirth. 2014, Ziggy Marley in concert. Wow, Ziggy did it twice in a row. 2015 was Fly Rasta, Ziggy Marley again. 2016, Strictly Roots by Morgan Heritage. Ziggy again. 2017, Ziggy Marley. Yo. Oh my gosh. 2018, Damien Marley, Stony Hill. Yo, these Marleys ain't playing around with the game, you know. Woo! 2019 was 44876. And that's Sting and Shaggy. And obviously, we already know 2020. Yeah, I mean, the contractor, Coffee, who won it with an EP. It was the Rapture EP, so... Yeah. She's obviously the youngest to do it, and by this list of course the first female so but yeah that's I thought that was interesting and then I had to kind of look at the charts just to see some things are not surprising number one is Bob Marley we, we I guess everybody knew that that would be the case um, he spent 56 weeks at number one um, so yeah Bob Marley in the Whalers yep yep the legend album is number one Number two is Dutty Classics Collection by Sean Paul. Number three is The Best of Shaggy, the Bombastic Collection. Number four was a band I'd never heard of. They're called Stick Figure. Uh, they've got some cool artwork though. I tweeted them out saying, you know, your artwork is cool. Um, I don't know. I don't know much about them, truthfully. I think it's a white reggae group, so there's that as much as you can know about a white reggae group really but you know they, they they've been doing really well they've got two songs in the, the number four and number five two albums i should say world on fire and set in stone and they've been on the billboard charts for ages number six is uh greatest hits ub40 a cousin of mine is in ub40 um big up yourself uh, seven is Skip Marley, Higher Place. Eight is Fix Tape by Popcorn. Number nine is Exodus by Bob Marley and the Whalers. Number 10 is Count Me In by Revolution, who I've never heard of before, but has spent 92 weeks on the charts and was number one at one point. So, yeah, I mean, full disclosure, UB40 was also number one at some point. It's been on there for 131 weeks. Set in Stone and World on Fire were both um, stick figure albums that spent time at number one and they've been on the charts for ages. So, uh, but yeah, that's the top 10 for the reggae charts. I want to make a point as well regarding reggae and Jamaica and obviously the connection between the two because the connection is there is no denying it, right? Reggae is all about love, unity, uprising, you know, passionate storytelling. And it comes from Jamaica, I'm proud to say, obviously. But how can Jamaica have the, the highest murder rate in the Western Hemisphere right now? Like, what is that about? But then you also look at Jamaica has the most churches per square inch anywhere in the world. So you've got reggae music, the home of reggae music, and the place with the most churches per square inch in the world has the highest murder rate in the Western hem Hemisphere. I, man. It's a hard one to swallow, that one. Like, it's hard to get your head around. But, you know, I, I just hope... You know, I hope we can kind of make that connection again with real reggae and real stories and real messages of unity and, and obviously uprising where applicable, but we need to drop out the killing and the violence. That, 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 that's my hope for Jamaica is that, you know what I mean? It gets back to being paradise. 
and 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 not just and not a nightmare for the people that live there and paradise for everyone else i mean like a real paradise an oasis if you like a utopia wherever it is you know but yeah that's my my take on the reggae month and Obviously, I listen to reggae music all the time, so it's not no different to me. But I will definitely be checking out a few of these um, these these albums that won the Grammys, and just to kind of refresh my knowledge because some of them I was like, you know what it is with the Grammys, only one album can win every year, and and I do genuinely feel it's time to split the categories. You can have reggae and dancehall; it's big enough now. It can have its own thing. You know, um, dancehall is not necessarily reggae. But there is always reggae and dancehall because you know what I mean. Reggae is the is the father and dancehall is the son. Really and truly. But yeah. Anyway, as always, please like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues, all of that good stuff. You know, every mikkel mikkel you know. But anyway, you know the vibes. I'm out.